Hello, everyone, and Happy New Year. This is the Golden Astrologer Podcast on Monday, January 2nd, 2023. I'm Deb McBride, and I am broadcasting from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica, where it is sunny still. And I welcome you to the new year. And uh, here we go. <laughs> um and so let's talk about that new year, shall we? This is what I've been calling, you know, calendar-wise, it's the new year, obviously. It's, you know, we, we are entering a new year. And it has to happen at some point. So no matter what you choose, if you decided April 1st was the new year, you know, it's still, you know, the new year, calendar-wise. Astrologically is another story. So let's talk about how everything is a little more complicated this beginning of this new year. Now, what happens at the beginning of a new year? Everybody wants to start off with a bang. That's it. We're going forward. I'm starting my diet. I'm starting my exercise protocol. I'm going to be more organized. I set intentions. I have resolutions, all sorts of new year stuff. Now, you can do this any day of the week, any day of the year, but everybody chooses to do this kind of stuff right at the new year. And it seems to be a tradition. But this new year is not really a new year. And if you've been seeing me on Instagram, you're going to understand what that's about, or at least you're going to have heard it before. Now, the new year is really delayed. And I'm saying it's delayed for three weeks. (laughs) And people are going to be like, what? Three weeks? How could that be? No, I'm starting my new year right now. Yeah, you could start your things. But there's there's several components to this. One of them is that Mercury just went retrograde on the 29th. And I talked about this last week too, but now we're going to get into it a little more deeply. Mercury just went retrograde on the 29th. Well, that was really at the tippy ten end, the tippy tippy end of the old year. And it's really um, not, uh, shall we say, it's not something going forward. It's something going backwards. In addition, Mars is going backwards, and Uranus is still going backwards. So we've got three planets in apparent backwards motion in retrograde. Normally, it's only Uranus, and Uranus is an outer planet, and they stay retrograde for five or six months, and we get them overlapping into the new year, and I don't consider them to be really significant as far as the new year beginning. Because Mercury started this retrograde on the 29th, and Mars is in its retrograde since October 30th, we are very much in the flow of these retrogrades. It's not as if something like Mars went retrograde December 1st and is going to be retrograde into February. This is something where we are experiencing a real shift in energy while we're starting the new year. So what's happening is we get Mercury retrograde until the 18th of January when it goes direct. We get Mars retrograde until the 12th of January when it goes direct. And we have Uranus retrograde until the 22nd of January when it goes direct. Now, what happens in between that is there's a new moon in Aquarius on the 21st. And really, it signifies the lunar new year of the water rabbit, which starts, you know, that day or the 22nd. Um, My calendar says the 22nd, but I think it's always at the new moon, which would be the 21st. So, but Uranus goes direct at the same time. So I think that that's a significant moment. So three weeks from now, Uranus will turn direct and we will have a new moon in Aquarius. And the new moon in Aquarius is what signifies the uh, Lunar New Year or the Chinese New Year. And so the, you know, the new moon in Aquarius can occur any time from the beginning of Aquarius, which starts the 20th to like the 19th of February. It could be a new moon in Aquarius on the 18th of February. And then that would be the uh, Lunar New Year but it's not doing that. So it's, I find this all very interesting. So when we have this lunar new year at the same time Uranus goes direct and it's the third planet to go direct in a matter of, you know, like 10 days, I would say 
that we are definitely looking at a pattern where the uh, new moon signifies the new year this time. Normally, our new year, our calendar new year, does not coincide with the lunar new year, especially if it doesn't happen to like February 17th or something. And when we are in this cycle like this, I would say that especially because Mercury is so early in its retrograde and then Mars has been so late in its retrograde, um, we have to look at the energies we're dealing with and they're telling us to not really begin anything new. Okay, so we are being told to review, revisit, revise, reestablish, reconnect, and just like, of course, you're going to have new things you want to do, but you're going to be in a stronger position if you start them at the new year, the lunar new year, the 21st or the 22nd for that matter. So um, we're in this kind of push pull. Now, this is where you have to trust your gut which I know you can do, <laughs> trust your instincts, because there's this outside world force that insists that you start your activities now, <laughs> that, you, that you keep pushing, 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 despite what the universal energies are doing. And this is where we have to listen to insight, intuition, and how we're feeling. Because even if you say, I'm going to do it the hell with what Deb says and Mercury whatnot, I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm just going to start my new diet. I'm going to start. You can be sure that by the time you reach the end of January, you're going to be either bored, tired, or need to restart. And it's something that is you know, not people's favorite thing to hear. Nobody wants to hear, don't do it yet. Everybody wants to push. And um, my question is, what's the hurry? You got a whole year. And if we're saying that universal energies are telling us that we need to step back and review things a bit. Maybe you're going to go on a diet and it's the wrong diet. Maybe you should be on the keto diet and you're going on the Atkins diet. Maybe, you know, there's, there's, and they're probably very similar, but <laughs> there, there's that. Um, there's this experience of listening to intuition, listening to your gut, listening to what is happening around you and navigating the energies and this is what life is about <laughs> you know um instead of listening to media and you know there are a lot of people benefiting financially if you go on weight watchers right now <laughs> or keto diet or whatever because you can start paying them january 1st and meantime it wasn't the right thing and you didn't really notice that until the end of the month and so this is why the other thing is Mercury doesn't have all the information. You don't have all the information. And so this is why it's good to just sit, listen, pay attention, and listen to your gut. Because this is not something that is a, 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 a common thing to hear from people, but also not something you want to hear. You want to hear them going forward. And it's like when I tell people Mars is retrograde, you don't really want to start a brand new relationship right now. Um, people don't want to hear that either. So I encourage you to listen to yourself. And yeah, listen to yourself more than you listen to me, of course. <laughs> and listen to what's really, really right for you. Now, if you say, I'm just going to go ahead and do it, go ahead, do it. See what happens. And there may be tweaks and adjustments that need to be made, on, especially especially if you're like starting an exercise program under a Mars retrograde. It's good to go back to an old exercise program under a Mars retrograde. That's a really good thing. Um, dig up the old uh, exercise protocol that you used to use and go back to it, especially if it worked for you before. So it's very good to do that. But um, a lot of us don't have a lot of energy under Mars retrograde. And so this has been... This has been a trying time, and it's a bit of a trying new year. I don't think it was a bad new year. I don't think anything awful happened. Thank goodness we didn't have eclipses or anything like that. But I feel like this is just a time to move cautiously, curiously forward. And curiously, you know, like, 
huh, I'm, what, what if, let me test the waters here, let me test the waters there. Don't get anxious. And I just finished a whole, well, I, there's one more class tomorrow. Um, we've just finished a whole time to manifest with my coach Yerlin and my mentor Yerlin. And she's, uh, it, we examined all of everyone's notions about time and all the things you hear about time and how time needs to work for us and can work for us, but we have to pay attention to our already established patterns around time. Um, like what you think of time and that time, you know, time is eternal and you don't need to be thinking in terms of I've got to get moving. I've got to get moving. And we were talking about like, I'm going to be out of time and all that, all those false thoughts that we've received from growing up, media, um, school, education, you know, all, all about time and this information that's not necessarily truthful right? It's not necessarily the way it is, especially when we go around time to make money and a time around manifesting. And we, one of our first exercises was start to start dissociating time with money because they're two different realms that we've been trained to associate. And it's some sort of, like she said, the spell that's been broadcasted. And, um, it's fascinating. It's fascinating to go through that. But anyway, so time, there's plenty of time for you to start your new protocol. And sitting back and working with yourself doesn't mean don't exercise, doesn't mean don't watch what you're eating or however you're planning, launch your programs or whatever you're doing, just focus on what you feel in alignment with, okay? So that's my big sermon for the beginning of 2023. We're still in an old year, we're still dealing with last year's matters until we get to that new moon on the 21st and when Uranus goes direct on the 22nd, okay? So there, I sort of lump them in together, even though they're sort of a day apart <clears throat> or a number of hours apart. I still lump them in together. And I think that I'm going to talk about this for these next couple of weeks, so just be aware of that. It's We're still processing last year. And I think last year was intense. I think there was a lot last year that was not necessarily fun <clears throat> and it needed it needs some rest and some space and some distance before we can actually establish what we want to do in this new year so there okay now there is a full moon this week and this is very interesting it's a full moon and it's in the sign of cancer and it's at 16 degrees of Cancer this coming Friday, the 6th of January, which is also the Epiphany or the Orthodox Christmas. And this is really an interesting, interesting experience because the full moon is following up that new moon that we had right before Christmas and on the 23rd. And then this is the halfway point between that and the new moon that I just spoke of. So this full moon gets not too close to Pluto, but close enough to the opposition with Pluto. And it is really in a place of, you know, it's sextiles Uranus. So it's, it's in an excitable place. It's touching the outer planets in many ways. And it does go void on Saturday, the moon, as it opposes Pluto. So in this full moon phase, it's going to, you know, obviously oppose the sun and it's going to uh, sextile Uranus and it's going to trine Neptune and then it's going to oppose Pluto. So the moon is going to do all these things with the outer, all three outer planets, all three outer planets. And that's a lot of intensity with the full moon. Even though it's not stressful aspects, there's still conversations going on. So it is a definite moon where there is some experience around transformation and shifting and working through energies that are still left over from last year. This is the Cancer moon. It is also where the moon is in rulership. So this is an important full moon. It always is. But it's the one time a year that the full moon, because we get the new moon when we are in Cancer, the sign of Cancer, June and July. And this is just where the moon is really at its fullest. And you can already see it. 
and you'll probably already feel it. It's a big watery moon that is connected to the outer planets. And as I'm sitting here, I just sort of feel the moon expanding. I feel this big energy around the moon and this incredible sense of like a big water balloon and just sort of sitting around being this big sort of bundle of water. Okay, so I'm expecting some release of that water as, you know, the moon gets a sextile with Uranus and trines Neptune and opposes Pluto. It's sort of bouncing around this water balloon of uh, this bouncing around of this energy. So take heed, get some rest if you need to. Cancer moons are times of being at home and being you know, a time when we are in a, a nice sensitive place. The moon is in cancer every month, but it's nice to be surrounded by home and hearth and, and security and family and those kinds of things. And that's what we're seeking. Bouncing around between the outer planets might be a little bit emotionally bumpy. Pay attention to this, okay? And just sense into it, sense into it. It's very important. Now, um, one of the other things that I wanted to mention is that I am not the only person talking about this beginning of the year being later than usual. Uh, I did a prediction event the other night with my friends, Lori Morrison and Joy Woodward, and Joy's a numerologist, and she said the same thing in numerology. She said the same thing about being slow into the new year. And Lori does intuitive work, and she also um, uses uh, information from Nostradamus and all the psychics and stuff that she's reading, and all the information we put together into one uh, prediction event that was two hours long. And if you're interested in any of the information from that, it was free, then you should email me, deb at debmcbride.com, because I can email the video to you if you missed it, the, the link to the video. And then there's also a free Crystal of the Year book and booklet. And then there's also a guide to the new year. That's not just what we've talked about in video, but there's a month by month guide that each of us contributed to. And that's $23. So if you're interested in any of this and you want more information, you just want to know about it, we do it every year. And we did it on the 28th. And if you're interested, write to me, deb at debmcbride.com, and I can get the information to you that you need. So I am not the only one saying that this is a slow to enter year. And the other things that are happening this week is, you know, as, as I said, Mercury is still retrograde. And on Saturday, the 7th, the sun in Capricorn conjuncts Mercury. Now, this is interesting because there's always a point in the retrograde when the sun and Mercury catch up. And that's important because it's part of the reason Mercury is in retrograde because it goes only so far away from the sun and then it has to turn around and come back. Mercury and Venus do this. And that's because, you know, we're here on Earth and they're between us and the sun. So the sun and Mercury, this is like the halfway point of the retrograde on the 7th. Remember a few weeks ago we had the halfway point of the retrograde of Mars and that was a big turning point too. And that was a full moon also. That was a full moon with the experience of being next to Mars. The full moon was with Mars. And this full moon is opposite Mercury. So when the sun and Mercury are conjunct, Mercury is involved in this full moon. So I think some information around this full moon and it will come forward. Things that we are listening for wanting to hear, hoping to hear, and and I think that this is a very um, emotional full moon, like I mentioned, but it's also this Mercury retrograde is going to be part of that. So do pay attention to that. Pay a lot of attention to your intuition, your emotions, your feelings, all that stuff. So it's very, I think it's an important full moon. And then we move to that new moon, but that's not for a few weeks. So we'll talk about that in a few weeks. The other thing that happens this week is our friend Venus is leaving the sign of Capricorn. And that's actually happening today, Monday the 2nd. And she's going into the sign of Aquarius for the first time since last year. And 
She is entering Aquarius at 9.09 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. And so she's in this nice place where she's finished with Pluto and she's getting ready to leave. She's a 29 Capricorn and she's getting out of that and going into the sign of Aquarius. Now, she won't be so serious in Aquarius as she is in Capricorn. There's been so much energy in Capricorn. And up until now, there's been these four planets in Capricorn. And of course, during the new moon, there was five planets in Capricorn. But now one of them is breaking free and going into Aquarius. And Saturn's in Aquarius, but it's like really much later on. And she will uh, conjunct Saturn at some point. But she's really in freedom mode. She wants to be free. She wants to be independent. She wants to be her own person. She's getting into the experience of, you know, freedom for women and that, that feeling of, you know, intellectual freedom and decision-making freedom and just being an independent sort and a little bit revolutionary, a little bit, uh, you know, on the, on the cusp of, you know, innovation. And just as she's moving into Aquarius, the moon is moving into Gemini later today. So the moon is, so, you know, the, the moon is moving, it's going to, it's void right now. It's void in Taurus right now. And it will move into Gemini and not be void anymore at 944 PM Eastern time. So like, you know, maybe 35 minutes later, the Venus, after Venus goes into Aquarius, the moon goes into Gemini, and then they trine each other four minutes after that. So there's this very nice recognition of camaraderie between the goddesses in air signs later this evening. And so I feel that's a good thing. I feel like they are talking to each other nicely. Uh, you know, the moon is connecting with Venus. They are, you know, and they don't, they do this at some point every month, but it's, it's sometimes it's hard to catch. So this is an air sign. It's very lovely. And they are going to have a nice conversation. And this is a good time for women to connect with each other, to meet with each other, to be, um, you know, supporting each other, supporting each other. That's important. And Venus and, and in Aquarius and the moon and Gemini is someone, you know, those are, those are smart cookies. Those are smart cookies. Those are women with like, who can think and, and talk and speak and speak up. So important for women to speak up right now, if they feel they need to, if there's a reason to, otherwise women talking to each other, uh, sharing ideas, being maybe a little revolutionary. This is good. Venus only goes into Aquarius once a year for about three to four weeks. Um, she is, uh, you know, I haven't seen a Venus retrograde in Aquarius and I don't know how long that happens. So this is not something where that happens often. So she's, she's not there very long. She's not very long in Aquarius. Uh, she'll be retrograde later this year in Leo, the opposite sign of Aquarius. But this is a lighter hearted, um, a little goofy, you know, place for Venus where friendship is actually very valuable. So value your friendships right now. Okay. Value your friendships. And if your friendships are not making you happy, then find new friendships that do make you happy because this is a time of great friendship. The moon is going to connect with the retrograde Mars tomorrow, Tuesday, the third, they will be conjunct. And Mars is already at its eight degrees place, okay? So this is the place where it's going to station direct, which means Mars is already slowing down. Now here we are, it's the second, and Mars is at eight degrees, and it's not going to go direct at eight degrees until the 12th, which is another 10 days. And so we've got a long time with Mars at eight degrees. And then on the other side of the direct station on the 12th, which is a week from Thursday, it's going to go stay at eight degrees for another period of time. And 
So if you have a planet at 8 Gemini or like somewhere between like 6 and 10 Gemini or Sagittarius or Virgo or Pisces, you're going to feel this. I have a whole bunch of planets around there, so <laughs> I'm going to feel this. This is this is a very strong stopping point. It's really going to be at 8 degrees most of this month, and then it'll go to 9 at the end of the month. But this is a very strong point. Mars is stopping. Now, Mars is something that rules like automotive. <laughs> it's all about mobility, and Mars is stopping. So there's a part of us that needs, again, to stop. <laughs> okay, and, and nobody wants to hear stuff. We've been stopping for two weeks, Deb. It's, you know, since Christmas and this and that. Mm -mm. You can't think about that. You have to think about where you're going and where you want to go next. And if you, and that's the other thing, even if you don't feel like you know where you want to go next, great, you got plenty of time to figure that out. Great. And so this is about the deep experience of Mars stopping. And what does that feel like for each and every one of us? Mars is not moving. Okay. Interesting. Fascinating. And so let's see what happens tomorrow tomorrow at 2.47 p.m. Eastern Time, when the moon gets there, because the moon is going to give us some information. This is Gemini. The moon is going to give us some information about Mars and about Mars is stopping. They're all ruled by the retrograde Mercury, right? So this is all interconnected. Mars and Mercury are interconnected. And this is a place where we want to pay close attention to the information we're receiving, we're, we're looking at uh, what this new year means to us, what's happening, what the progression should look like of our events. Pay very close attention to this. Mercury is going to make another trine to Uranus. Remember, it did that before it went retrograde. It's going to trine Uranus again on Sunday the 8th. And so, again, Mercury's busy this week, you know, between the sun the moon, the trining of Uranus, the conjuncting of Mars. Again, Mercury is very busy. A lot of information flying around, a lot of information happening. Today, Mercury, early this morning, the wee hours, uh, Mercury sextiled Neptune. So again, pay attention to your intuition. It's actually a time for us to really stay close to the information we're receiving. Very interesting. In other worlds, um, the sun will try in Uranus on Thursday, and that's always good supportive energy for innovative activities and ideas and just sort of freshening up the energy. Maybe you want to do a space cleanse in your house or something, just sort of freshening up the energy wherever you are, because Uranus is, Uranus is very energetic and wants the new and the innovative. So let's like clear out the old. Okay. And those are good things to occupy yourself in these next three weeks, how to, clear out the old, because we're still clearing out the old from last year. And how many times can I say this, right? <laughs> and that is about it. Um, I think that's it. You know, we've got some trines to Uranus this week, because the sun is busy with Mercury, and both of them are trining Uranus. So this is all, there's some bold new ideas coming. That doesn't mean you can't write them down and use them later. That means, you know, this is the point of listening and sitting and being with it. You don't want to plow forward when new information is coming your way. So that's all good. And that's about it. So I thank you again, and welcome to 2023. And thank you for listening all of last year. And thank you for being with me now. I would like to see you again next week. So come back and visit the Golden Astrologer podcast. The Instagram is the Golden Astrologer. My website is thegoldenastrologer.com. And you can book sessions there with me for astrology or with Reiki or emotional clearing. And I will be here again on this podcast. This time it will be Sunday the 8th because I, you know, I did it today instead of yesterday, because yesterday was January 1st, and it's technically, it's a holiday, right? I could have started my podcast yesterday, and I thought, you know what? It's a holiday. If I begin my year, and this is the way we have to think in this next few weeks, if I begin my year with 
working on a holiday, okay, because podcasts are work, if I begin my year with working on a holiday, my year is not going to be what I want it to be. I'm not going to be able to take time for myself. I've got to set the boundary now. So part of that is not working on the holiday. And so I took my time today, which is still technically a holiday because things are closed around here. Not everything's closed, but it's still people don't have to work today and stuff here. And we are in holiday mode. And for some people, Costa Rica doesn't go back to work till like Wednesday. But for, a lot, I think in the States, they are in a holiday place. Also, I think it might still be like a federal holiday or something. I don't know. But, you know, we're still on holiday mode. So as we ease into, and I mean ease into the new year, that's what I just chose to do is like establish my boundaries early and say, I'm not going to produce something on a holiday when it's time to rest. Thank you for listening. Have a beautiful first week of the new year and I will see you next week. Gratitude to all.